meet Lucy Carter, a single mom juggling work and family in the 1968 TV series, Here's Lucy. Starring the iconic Lucille Ball, this sitcom promises a roller coaster of emotions. Get ready for laughter, shock, and even a touch of sadness as Lucy navigates her way through life's comedic twists. Have you ever wondered how a simple TV series could leave a lasting impact on someone's life? Perhaps you have a cherished memory linked to Lucy's antics that brings a smile to your face. As we delve into the depths of Here's Lucy, get ready for funny, shocking, and even heartwarming facts that will keep you hooked. Now, we're curious what's your most cherished memory or personal experience with Here's Lucy? Share your stories in the comments below. We'd love to hear how Lucy and her escapades have become a part of your life. Get ready for a trip down memory lane with Lucy. The laughter is just beginning. In the 1968 TV series, Here's Lucy, Lucille Ball took center stage alongside Gail Gordon. Lucille, famous for her work at RKO, transitioned from walk-on roles to starring ones, eventually acquiring the studio, which became Dezillu. Notable female stars at RKO included Irene Dunn, Katherine Hepburn, Ginger Rogers, and Maureen O'Hara. Dezillu, consisting of three studio lots, Dezillu Gower, Dezillu Kawanga, and Dezillu Culver, went on to produce hits like I Love Lucy, Our Miss Brooks, and The Untouchables. Following her marriage to Daisy Arnaz and subsequent studio ownership, Lucille Ball, a trailblazer, became the first and only female studio head. Despite overruling her board of directors, she greenlit productions like Mission Impossible and Star Trek. Notably, she also approved Mannix and produced the successful film Yours, Mine, and Ours. In the later stages of the show, some felt the premise wore thin, questioning why a smart and attractive woman found herself in numerous comedic situations. The late columnist Liz Smith opined that Lucy's character should have been a magazine editor, capable of controlling situations with a mere glance. Lucille Ball, a talented individual, turned down roles in significant films, showcasing her potential beyond fictional characters. In reality, she was a tough, beautiful, and glamorous woman with a keen intellect, defying the on-screen personas she portrayed. Lucille Ball's versatility as an actress was evident in specials like Lucy in London, where she shed the school marm image from the show and revealed a vibrant, life body. Sinatra once considered her for a role in The Manchurian Candidate, emphasizing her ability to portray a glowering figure. Despite fictional characters, her real-life aspirations included working with John Ford, underscoring her desire to be recognized as a great actress. In essence, Lucille Ball's influence extended far beyond her roles in sitcoms, showcasing her talent in various facets of the entertainment industry. Here's Lucy served as a platform for her lasting legacy, but her real-life persona transcended the fictional worlds she inhabited, revealing a remarkable and versatile individual. In its fifth season, the TV show Here's Lucy saw a notable shift in Nielsen ratings, falling out of the top 10 for the first time in Lucille Ball's career. This led to her consideration of concluding the series, and a final episode was filmed. However, CBS successfully persuaded her to return for one more season, extending the show's run. One of the cast members, Desiderio Alberto Arnaz Roman IV, had a guest appearance on The Brady Bunch during its first season, playing a crucial role in an episode titled The Possible Dream. His involvement in external projects while on the show highlighted the interconnectedness of television during that era. Arnaz IV decided to leave Here's Lucy after the third season to pursue a career in the movie industry. Despite this decision, he made a surprising return in the fifth season, appearing in an episode titled Lucy and Joe Nama. The dynamics of the cast and the show's trajectory reflect the challenges faced by successful series, such as changing ratings and the departure of key cast members. These elements added layers to the show, capturing the essence of the evolving television scene during that time. During the late 1960s, in the competitive world of television, Rowan and Martin's laugh and playfully poked fun at The Lucy Show and its follow-up. The cast gave a humorous salute with a goodbye Lucy, leading to Lucille Ball's amused response on a talk show. Ironically, Laugh-In met its end in 1973, a year before Here's Lucy concluded. In 1973, a crucial moment arrived for the show when Lucy, for the first time, fell out of the top 10 in ratings. To breathe new life into the series, a CBS executive suggested aligning it more with contemporary hits like Maude and The Mary Tyler Moore Show. Unimpressed, 
Lucy promptly had the executive dismissed by contacting CBS head Bill Paley. Despite a filmed final episode, CBS convinced Lucy to return for one more season. However, at the end of season six, Lucille Ball decided to bid farewell to the series. Originally, Doris Singleton, known for her role in I Love Lucy, was set to co-star as Harry's efficient morning secretary. The initial plan was to contrast her character with Lucy's scatterbrained afternoon secretary, providing a glimpse into Lucy's family life. However, this concept was short-lived, and Singleton's character was dropped after the first episode, emphasizing the show's shift toward portraying Lucy's life with her children. The ups and downs of Here's Lucy's success mirrored the challenges faced by Lucille Ball both on and off screen. From comedic competition to network pressures, the series navigated turbulent waters, offering a unique perspective into the 1960s television world. These behind-the-scenes dynamics, intertwined with decision-making and casting choices, shaped the show's path, ultimately contributing to its place in television history. In the fourth season finale of Here's Lucy, a spin-off pilot titled Kim finally cuts You Know whose apron strings featured Lucy Desiree Arnaz but failed to secure a deal. This attempt at branching out into a new narrative direction hinted at the show's willingness to explore alternative storylines. However, the spin-off idea did not find success, reflecting the challenges in expanding the Here's Lucy universe. One particularly unconventional episode of the series brought Lucille Ball face-to-face -face with her real-life counterpart. Set in the 1970s, the episode used a split screen to showcase both Lucille Ball, recognizable for her trademark red hair, and Lucy Carter, glamorously adorned with a black wig. This creative endeavor exemplifies the show's willingness to experiment with storytelling techniques, blurring the lines between fiction and reality. Another intriguing addition to the show was the guest appearance of Lucy's friend Ginger Rogers. The connection between Lucy and Ginger traced back to their shared attendance at Ginger's mother's school for young actresses run by Lella Rogers. Lucy's invitation to Ginger to appear on the show as a star she was stalking provided a unique glimpse into their real-life friendship, adding a layer of authenticity to the on-screen dynamics. These elements showcase the series' willingness to step outside traditional sitcom boundaries, exploring spin-offs, experimenting with innovative storytelling techniques, and incorporating real-life relationships into the fictional narrative. Here's Lucy demonstrated versatility in its approach, keeping the audience engaged with unexpected twists and connections. Lucille Ball faced an unexpected challenge before the fifth season of her iconic sitcom, Breaking Her Leg. Concerns arose about the show's future, but it persisted, showcasing Lucy in a leg cast for part of the season. During its inaugural season, Here's Lucy episodes were co-produced by Paramount Television. The collaboration set the stage for the series' initial success, laying the groundwork for the years to come. Notably, the show reached its pinnacle during the 1970-1971 season, becoming the number one television show on CBS. This achievement solidified Here's Lucy's status as a staple in American households, capturing the audience's attention and securing its place in television history.